Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and today we get into some solo gameplay for Distilled from Paverson Games. If you haven't checked out my unboxing video or my how to set up video, I'll put a link to that entire showcase which is continuing right now up in the top right hand corner so you can get caught up. There is one correction that I need to make from the prior setup video which I did put in the pin comment and video description to make people aware. Thank you for the individual that caught this as it's been very important to make sure it it is seated correctly let's go ahead and take care of that first and then we'll dive into some gameplay in the setup video i had the signature recipe sitting inside the recessed area here of the clipboard but i had it on the wrong side it should be flipped over to the opposite side that's all i have for corrections and now let's find out how we win a game of distilled or lose it when playing solo in order to win a game of distilled in solo play you have to complete at least one goal from each of the five rows starting at the very bottom row with row one working your way all the way up to row five and also meet or exceed the combined target score the target score can be shown in red there on the a and b goal cards combined for each ones you've completed so essentially if we move through them and complete one b goal and one a goal we'll sum those values up and that is going to be the spirit points we're trying to meet or exceed completing goals in distilled is very important so keeping an eye on this area is always a good idea let's talk about how this area operates as an example i'm not going to reveal cards that I don't want to see but I will go ahead and talk you through as if we're moving through these rows so you get the gist of how this operates basically you have a marker doesn't matter really what it is for this we have another player colors marker denoting the active row because we start in active row number one now we basically have two C goal cards here we can choose to go after either one to start so this one here says sell a spirit containing three alcohol or more we get two spirit points if we do the other one says collect a silver tier spirit label you get a spirit point and you also get some money now when you complete a solo goal card you'll notice on the card there's different types of goals you're going after there's distill goals sell goals collect goals or earn goals but no matter what you can always choose to go ahead and complete a goal when you meet what's on the card so there will be certain circumstances where you'll meet the goal but you may not want to actually complete the goal we'll talk more about that later in this situation I've gone ahead and completed this goal right here so when you do you go ahead and reveal the cards that are above it. So I'm not going to actually reveal them. I'm just going to turn them to denote they were flipped over. Now the active row marker is letting you know which row is active, but also you can go above the active marker row. You can't go below it though. So for instance, in this situation, I would have the availability because I completed this goal to either complete this goal, this goal, or even a goal that's sitting adjacent to one of the ones I've completed in the active row. So I've got options here. If I wanted to go after more spirit points or more money and I was able to pull this off, I could complete that one. But the second you go ahead and complete a goal above, so say for instance, I complete this one right here, now the active marker is gonna move up to this space and that's gonna stop me from completing this goal in the future. And again, because I've completed this goal right here, I have the availability to complete this one beside it if I wish or to go after one of the two above the one I completed. Now this is where potentially this solo goal swap card can come into play because say for instance in this row right here you're looking at these two goals and you might not want to jump at them or maybe you're not ready for them just yet but this one's enticing and it has been revealed but then you look at it further and realize I can't accomplish that one but I don't know what that one is yet so maybe I'll use my solo goal swap card to swap this one with this one and of course the second you move this one which is face down over here because it's above one of the ones that's been completed it can be flipped upwards and for a penalty in terms of actually I shouldn't say a penalty well it is a penalty but basically you're going to have five added to your target score if you choose to go ahead and do this swap you'll flip it over and there you go you got a five red that'll total into the other red numerical values going forward now that solo swap card can only be used once so that penalty of five can only apply one time so let's continue with our example here we've just recently completed this goal let's say so we have these two we could start running towards if we wish so we go ahead and choose to do the one for 12 again you're going to start focusing on the fact you have these red numerical values and again trying to make sure you can actually obtain that many spirit points or more by the end of the game so let's say we complete this one the second we complete one that's above a row where the active marker isn't then we're going to move this thing up to that row now nothing below it can be completed any further and we're going to go ahead and reveal these two above we now have more options now when we get into this row 
look, it's interesting in terms of choice and how goals are completed because we have the availability to go to the next tier if we wish, but we also have the availability to do either one of these. You may not want to do them because if you do them, you're going to increase the target score. So this is one of those situations why in the rulebook it says you may complete a goal that you have reached. You may end up completing this goal or this goal while you're playing after having this one done. And you're probably not going to want to go ahead and complete it in order to bump the target score higher. And to wrap things up, if you make it to the very top row, because there's going to be some solo games, you may not even make it up there. But if you do, then you now have all your completed goals marked. You take a look at any ones that have the red values, you add them all up. If you use the swap card, you add that on top of it, and you have the SP value or spirit point value you are trying to hit or exceed to win the game. So now that we understand the solo goals, let's dig into some solo gameplay, starting in round number one, denoted by the barrel up here on the one slot of the round track. Now, the very first phase of a round is the market phase, but there is one thing you want to keep an eye on for sure as you move through gameplay, not out of the gates, but it will matter. There is a power icon. It's a green icon. It's actually mentioned on the reference card at the very, very top. It lets you know that if you happen to have any of those icons on any cards, you want to use those effects at the start start of the round, they're usually going to have you gaining things, so you're certainly not going to want to forget about them. We now head into the market phase where we get to choose to purchase things. If you're playing multiplayer, you go around the table, everybody takes a turn purchasing one thing at a time. When you're playing solo, you're by yourself. There is no waiting. You're just going ahead and purchasing exactly what you want based on how much money you have. At the very beginning, we start off with four coins, so we don't have a ton, but we have options across premium items, ingredients, which are premium as well. They just don't state premium on the back and then we have distillery upgrades up top so we have lots of options there again it's all going to be constrained by our money the cost of things is in the bottom right hand corner on a price tag and we have the basic market here that row along the bottom some of these are zero costed items you can get them for free and then other ones will cost you something but the one thing to note here is you can only purchase up to two cards per player per round and that does apply in solo mode so i can only take at most two cards from the basic market now it's worth mentioning before I start purchasing things in my pantry on my dashboard I have a water and a yeast already which is two of the three ingredients I need in order to distill something so we're almost there already. Now besides goal cards which tell you what objectives you're going after we need to take a look at our recipe clipboard here to see what we can actually try to make. Again the market phase is very much a planning phase you're picking up items and ingredients that are going to help you to distill things and to create spirits and you need to make sure that you're keeping an eye on the prize in terms of what you're aiming to accomplish in a given full round. So here we know right now we can make moonshine. It's actually quite easy to do so and I'll show you why. The check marks let you know exactly which recipes you can create. Currently, we have no access to all these other recipes. We actually have to pay based on what rank they are. So you'll see some of them are bronze, some of them are silver, and way on the bottom off screen, some are gold. The cost to unlock them is up top. So during the market phase, you can go ahead and spend some of your money to unlock a recipe. So maybe I'll use some of my four coins in order to unlock a new recipe, giving me more options. And of course, the more options you have, when you go through the distill phase, which you'll see later on it will give you more options once you've actually created something and allow you to choose what you've actually created here we just have moonshine and vodka we also have our signature recipe open at the very bottom of the clipboard but you have to have your specific signature ingredient as part of it in order to even be able to pull that recipe off and right now the only way to get that ingredient into your pantry is to get one of the goals completed at the top of your player board which we are not looking at yet so we'll talk more about that later on but right now looking at each of the ones we can create you'll notice there's requirements on the board that tell you basically what you need to have inside of that distilled spirit in order for it to become that said spirit so if we want it to be moonshine we need to make sure we don't have any plant sugar any green sugar or any fruit sugar and then down below here you can see vodka doesn't matter it can be green sugar it can be plant sugar or fruit sugar any of those inside 
aside after the distilled process has gone through will create vodka. There's a couple other icons on this clipboard I want to go over. You'll see a couple next to the recipes here. These ones denote the distiller's location. So you basically take a look at your distiller identity, which is on your office, on your board, your distillery board. I have the Brown Brothers. And you'll see up top, it tells us from this area of the world. Well, if you're wondering what that is, I mean, you can look a little closer at that icon or you can use your reference card here. It'll tell you it's for Asia. You also have Europe, America, a bunch of different areas. You'll also see there's the padlock one telling you it's coming from the distiller's region. Why this matters is because certain goals and other game elements are going to call upon drink spirits being made from different areas of the world in order to complete those goals. So for instance, we have like a very, the very top of my pyramid here, we have a goal that says collect two spirit labels from three different regions. So that would mean that as we go ahead and create different spirits, you'll see we'll get a label for them. We need to make sure in that case, if that's the goal we're going after at the very end, to have three different regions involved. And again, we have different regions noted right here on the reference card. So as you take a look across the entire clipboard, you start to see all the different regions these different spirits can possibly come from. And so that's going to be part of your strategy and which ones you should unlock and start creating to meet some of those goals. There's another set of icons that's also very important to keep your eye on. It's underneath each of the recipes across the top here. Underneath, you're going to see in smaller sets of icons, metal barrel, for instance, with an aged icon with an X to it, meaning this is a non-aged spirit, which is moonshine. Vodka, exactly the same thing, non-aged. You're going to go ahead and put those things in metal barrels and you're going to sell them very quickly. And that's going to go through most of them across the top. But as you get further down into whiskey, rum, and some other ones, you're going to need a wooden barrel to put it inside of. And it is going to be aged and that's going to add things like flavor into the mix which will spice things up we'll talk more about that later on the reason this is worth mentioning right now is in the market phase you need to keep your eye on what you have in your storeroom on your dashboard in terms of what type of spirit you're trying to create if you get all the ingredients for a whiskey and you've gone ahead and you've paid in order to unlock this silver tiered whiskey great news but if you don't have the wooden barrel to put it in you're not making whiskey. Now, just a bit ago, I talked about what was in my pantry. I had a water and a yeast. Well, in my storeroom, I have a bottle and a metal barrel. These are two starting items that I always have. You will always have a metal barrel available to you and a bottle to place a spirit that you've gone ahead and created into. As soon as you're done, you're gonna always get these ones back because they're starting items. But you're gonna be trying your best to try to get better versions of these as you go through the game as they'll net you better rewards. All right, so back to the market phase. We know we have yeast. We know we have water. We need to have at least one grain sugar, plant sugar, or fruit sugar to at least start the distill process when we hit that phase coming up next. We know we have a metal barrel, so that's going to work for vodka or for moonshine. So we're sitting pretty good there. We have four coins. We need to decide, is there anything we want to go after, particularly in here? I could go after grain sugar, for instance, at zero cost, which would get me exactly what I need to get going on the distill process without spending any money. And I could potentially take my money and head into the kind of advanced market or the market to grab some things that are much more premium, like better bottles. Because once we go ahead and distill the spirit, we're going to place it inside of a bottle to sell it. And that will net us more money and more spirit points. We have other ingredients that can net us more money and more spirit points and sometimes have effects on them as well. And then we have really cool distillery upgrades. And those upgrades can really enhance your overall production. So from the basic market down here, below, I've gone ahead and taken two cards. That's the maximum I can take. Both of these cost zero, as you can see from the bottom right of the card. They're both mixed grains. They're going into my pantry. Now I've still got four coins to spend. I don't have to spend these coins. I can choose to hold on to them for later. But one thing worth mentioning is every single time after the market phase is done, this row for sure is going to vanish every single time. There is a B deck stack of cards up here, which we're going to go ahead and cycle a card off the top. And we're going to look to see what X pattern is on it for this placement. And it's going to discard a number of cards out of the market as if other people are buying from the market at the same time we are. But I will let you know that always this row will always disappear. So if there's something that you want from one of these three, you better get it in the given round. Taking a look at the premium items here at the market, the frosted glass bottle looks pretty good. It says when selling gain one spirit point if selling a non-age spirit gain two spirit points instead 
that sounds pretty good. Plus, it gives me two money. So to spend two to get that sounds pretty good. So that costs me two. So I'm taking two of the four that I have, spending it, placing it back in the bank. And I'm also placing that item I just gained, that premium item bottle. It is going into my storeroom, which is where my barrel, my metal barrel, and my regular glass bottle currently sit. So it just all stays in the storeroom for those items. And now we go ahead immediately and replenish the empty space. The next one that came out is a wax sealed bottle. At this point, only having two coins left, I'm not gonna be able to buy much of anything. The cheapest thing in the market right now is three, so I'm gonna stop right here. Now, I could have spent some of my money in the basic market because there are market cards there, down below in this row, that cost four, three, two, and one. But again, I took two mixed grains from there and that's the most amount of cards you can take from the basic market. So at this point, I'm done. At the end of the market phase, the next thing you do, and this is specific only to the solo mode, you're gonna take your B-goal cards, you're gonna see a card on top, you're gonna to take that card, you're gonna remove it, placing it on the bottom, and you're gonna take a look at the top card you've now revealed, and that is the pattern of cards that are being discarded. And as I mentioned before, there's always X's on the far column. So as you can see, things come out and they disappear quite quickly after the round in which you saw them. So again, if you don't get what you want, some of those things are going to disappear. They end up on the truck and they're purchased and gone. The next thing you do is you're gonna go ahead and take all the cards remaining, push them all the way to the end of the row. You're also gonna notice there's three spots across the truck. They pertain to each of the rows. So you're keeping all your distillery upgrades being discarded at the top or the front of the truck and all the premium items are towards the back with the ingredients, the premium ones in the middle. That keeps things nice and organized to be able to reset for another game in the future without things being all mixed all over the place. At this point, we now replenish all the empty holes. All the slots have been filled. We got all kinds of things. We got canister bottles. We have an American Standard bottle that showed up. We even have a cool vintage decanter bottle. We have a number of different things here. A number of different specialists have shown up as well for distillery upgrades. Lots of things to think about, but again, remembering always that far right column is the next on the chopping block guaranteed. We now head into the distill phase where we take a look at our ingredients in our pantry and we choose which ingredients we want to put into our wash back area. So we have three different areas here, one for yeast, one for water, and then the middle we place any of our sugars, whether it be grain, plant, or fruit. Again, all dependent on what recipe we're hoping to try to be able to create. Now in this case, I'm going ahead and using every single ingredient from my pantry. Don't have to do this, but again, need to have at least one in each of the different slots. As soon as you're done, you're gonna take a look at your middle column here based on however many sugars you've put in here, you're gonna put an equal amount of alcohol cards. So I've got two grain sugars in there so two alcohol cards are going in as well and just to clarify you don't have to place an ingredient in each one of these three during the distill phase if you don't plan on actually distilling or making anything you can choose to literally do nothing if you don't want to but again you're not going to be progressing very far if you're not distilling at least something during this phase you're always trying to gun to make something rather than just kind of sitting on your hands in this case here we've gone ahead and taken all the cards we placed them into a pile we've shuffled them up and the distill process is now going to have us taking a card off the top and the bottom of the deck and placing them back inside our pantry even if they're an ingredient that didn't belong there in the beginning. Well, that was unexpected. I got both of my alcohol cards pulled out, top and bottom of the deck, which is really unfortunate because you guys might be wondering, well, wait a minute, hold on a second. You are making a spirit and all the alcohol is gone? Is that even a spirit at this point? Basically, the game states in the rule book that thematically there's still traces of alcohol inside the spirit you've created, even when all the alcohol gets pulled out. Of course, you're not going to net as much money in the end, which you can see because alcohol being present inside of your actual distilled spirit is going to net you money. And when it's sitting in your pantry, well, it's giving you nothing. Now, what's kind of cool, though, about having alcohol cards in here, though, is that they're kind of like wild cards. Later on, when we're going through another distill phase I can actually use an alcohol card as a water or as a yeast so this actually gives me flexibility even though it's hurting me during this current sell and we're certainly not ready to sell just yet but we will be in the near future now at this point we go ahead and reveal what cards are inside the deck so we have two grain sugars a yeast and a water so we come over here to vodka and moonshine and we take a look and say well 
any of the grain sugars will work for vodka. So that means we're able to create vodka if we wish. It states here that in order to make moonshine, it can't have any grain sugar present. So we know we can't create moonshine. So the only option here at this point is to make vodka. Now there will be times once you've purchased a number of recipes that one particular distill could potentially make multiple different types of recipes. So you might be wondering, well, which one does it make? You get to decide. That's part of the strategy, picking and choosing which things you're going to actually create as a spirit to help you get to victory. So in this case here, we're going after vodka. In order to make vodka, we know we need to put this thing inside of a metal barrel. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and take these cards. We're gonna put them all together in a pile. We're gonna take the metal barrel card and place it on top and we're going to go ahead and put it in our warehouse down here. Now once you know what spirit you're going to go ahead and make, you're going to go ahead and claim the label for it. So I know it's going to be vodka and you're going to place that on top of the barrel in this case. And that's it. We're now done the distill phase. We move into the sell phase where we're absolutely going to be gunning to sell this thing. So as we're ready to sell now, I've gone ahead and taken the vodka label, placed it off to the side for a moment as we're going to go ahead and place this vodka inside of a bottle. We need to bottle this stuff up. We can either put it in our frosted glass bottle that we bought recently which will net us some nice money and some additional spirit points or we can use our basic glass bottle which nets us a little bit of money and no spirit points let's go ahead and use the fancier frosted glass bottle and now we're going to go ahead and sell this by taking a look at every single card in the deck not only for the dollar value we're going to get for it but also the spirit points down below so let's go ahead and count up our money from this spirit we've just gone ahead and created we've got two one and one so that's going to be four just off the cards alone Alone, but on the clipboard for making vodka, there's additional money as well. Vodka also nets us one right here, so it's a total of five. So I've gone ahead and grabbed five coins on top of the two we already have, so we got a total of seven in the bank. Now let's count up our spirit points. We have two spirit points because we're selling a non-age spirit and going through the rest of the cards, nothing else. But on the clipboard, we do gain two for vodka, so it's going to be a total of four right there. But on top of that, the Brown Brothers also have an ability that says during the sell phase, gain two SP when selling a spirit from a region you have no other spirit labels from. This is the first time we're creating this one. And this one, being this icon right here, is going to be this icon right here based on the distiller location. It's the first time we're making that one. So we're getting two SP there. That's a total of six now. All we do is take a look at the shelf board here. We're going to take our token for our player color and we're going to go up six points on the spirit track also worth mentioning once you get above 50 you're going to take a 50 token you can just place it on the board it'll be in the color the one you're going to take that matches your marker as well just to remind you you've already got 50 points but it's usually pretty easy to remember that at this point, we need to go through our stack that we just went ahead and created and clean things up. So first off, any bottles that you actually have used that are not your starting glass bottle are going to be placed off to the side for reference. There are certain goals and game aspects that'll call you to check the bottles that you've used in order to potentially gain points or complete a goal. So you want to keep those off to the side. Don't put them back in a discard pile. In other words, the metal barrel here is a starting item. So it simply just goes right back into your storeroom. And of course, any ingredients are going to be lost. They're going to go back to their respective decks. So all the mixed grains, the yeast, and the water. The final thing I want to do during the sell phase is to deal with my spirit label bonus. And this is a good thing. You don't want to forget about this. I actually should have done it one step back. Now I just went ahead and took my spirit deck that I created to make the spirit and dispersed it all back to the decks it should be in because most of those cards for the ingredients were in the basic market. So there's just piles of them. So you just place those cards back in there. But just before I did that I should have gone ahead and got myself a spirit label bonus across the top of my distillery board. And the reason you don't want to forget about this is because it's pretty awesome. There's a lot of really great bonuses here. You can get straight money. You can get spirit points. You can actually move your signature ingredient in the case of the Brown Brothers. It's this one right here into your pantry. And then of course that allows you to start running after your signature recipe, which you already have unlocked from the beginning of the game. And you can start trying to create that. And then you have other ones here, which are a little bit better for end game maybe or once you see a card that gets discarded to the truck that you missed out on you can discard a card from your pantry to take that item from the truck or that thing from the truck so that's pretty cool doesn't have to be an item it can be anything ingredient item upgrade whatever 
Then over here, we have things that are specific to gaining a free premium ingredient, gaining a new recipe for free, so you don't have to pay the cost, you just gain the recipe, that's awesome. Uh, gaining an item for free or gaining a distillery upgrade for free. And of course, there's always the opposite side. If you already have one of those things, you don't need more of them, you can just take the SP points instead. So long story short, lots to choose from. Typically off the start of the game, I really like the ones kind of on this side. And sometimes I even like taking the money off the hop. It can be a nice big boost. But to be honest, there's one item inside of this uh, market currently that I'm gunning for that's quite expensive. It's five. I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and just take that premium item. So I'm going to go ahead and place my vodka label on the one free item. The one I've got my eye on here is the American Standard Barrel. It's a premium item. I definitely like it. I'm going to take it. It's going to go into my storeroom now as another option here. Again, though, in order to make use of this barrel, I need to make sure that I pay the cost to unlock a recipe that can use a wooden barrel, and then I can really get what I want out of this. Now, again, the second you take something from the market, you're going to go ahead and just shuffle things down, and you're going to replace with the next item. So we got ourselves a worm bottle. That's going to wrap up the cell phase. So again, the key things to remember during the sell phase is you're going to go ahead and you're going to bottle up the spirit that you've been creating and wanting to sell. You're going to go through, you're going to collect all of your money. You're going to collect all your spirit points. You're going to take your spirit label bonus, which I just did across the top here. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to get all the cards inside the deck that created that spirit and put them back in their associated discard piles. Or if they came from the basic market, you can just stack them back on top of the decks like I did here. And again, Again, always remember glass bottles that are special, not the one that's the basic one inside of your storeroom, but any ones you buy that are unique essentially need to go in a special pile off to the side as the game might call for them later or a goal card might. Don't forget this, very easy to put those inside of a discard pile for the premium items. Now we've reached the age phase, and in this phase there's nothing to do because I have no spirits to age at the moment, so we're skipping right past it to the end of round. But before we do that, let's just talk about a situation where I actually do have something to age and what happens. Let's say hypothetically I had everything in place to pull off making whiskey, including the recipe, the wooden barrel that I'm going to need, all the ingredients after the distill process in place, everything's all good to go. I would wait until this phase, now I'll be placing my stack of cards, very similar to what I did with vodka, inside the warehouse. Of course, there'd be a barrel on top of it instead of the, it wouldn't be a metal barrel, it would be an actual wood barrel in this case, as denoted by the whiskey requirement there. But once it's in the warehouse, the next thing you do is you take a face down flavors card and you slide it underneath the deck. And that card is going to denote that, of course, just based on aging processes that most of us know for alcohol in general, it's going to add some flavoring to what's going on as it ages. And that's going to either be good, bad, or in between. It can potentially increase how much money the thing is worth, the longer and however many rounds you leave it in there to age. When you choose to sell it is when you choose to sell it. So you could literally leave it in there for a long time. And the longer you leave it in there for, the more flavor cards get added and the SP points start going way up. So there's that option. But again, if you're not selling that spirit, it's basically sitting there not netting you anything. And of course, you're not. it's not a revolving door situation. You only have two slots to be able to do that in. So if you have two age spirits in here and you're holding on to them all the way to the end of the game, you're probably not going to progress well enough through the solo goals. You're going to have to mix and match things that sell quickly and things that age a little bit better. We've now hit the end of the round. Let's go over the phases that I've covered with you. We had the market phase, the distill phase, the sell phase, the age phase. And now during the end of round in the solo mode, the things you need to think about are if you happen to have any spirits that are currently aging in your warehouse, and I don't have any right now, but let's say I was aging whiskey, I could choose to hold a tasting up to four spirit points in total could be spent in order to net me up to four coins. So if I want to generate some money before the next round, I could choose if I had an aging spirit in here, I could choose to just knock my spirit point down by one and gain a coin, or at maximum, I could knock it down by four to two to gain four coins. 
This is a nice way to gain yourself some money while you have spirits sitting in here that you didn't sell in a given round. After determining whether you want to do that, in this case I don't have the option to do it so I can't, you go ahead and move the round marker from round one to round two. And that's it. That's a full round from start to finish in terms of how the game flows and operates. Now there's more intricacies as we're going to continue to go through here and you'll start to see the planning that's involved round to round. Things are simple at the beginning but things really start to open up as you get to gain more money throughout the game selling more and more spirits and we're on our way to trying to accomplish one of our two goals here to start off again just so you know what they are one of them says i could sell a spirit containing three alcohol or more the last one we tried to sell uh well it actually had two alcohol inside of it but then it got removed during the distill process so that wouldn't have even if i had I had three in there and they all three of them got removed during the distill process that would not satisfy the goal card. I have to sell a spirit with three alcohol included. So you can see how the distill process can actually mess you over sometimes. Again, that might mean in order to counteract that, you need to put a lot more sugar into your washback in order to make sure you get equivalent amount of alcohol to increase your odds that they won't be pulled out during the distill process. These are the kinds of things that start to matter. You don't see them in the first round, but your brain starts to click on them quite quickly as you play through gameplay and you start to see how much strategy and mitigation is involved in trying to pull off the spirits you're making. It's not as simple as just pointing to one of the recipes you have and just making it. It doesn't always work out. Now, the other goal that I could go after is collecting a silver tier spirit label. So that means I have to sell a spirit that's considered a silver tier. So that would be gin, whiskey, or rum. If I can unlock one of these recipes, get the ingredients in place that I need, get it all together through the distill process, and sell it, then I can go ahead and complete that goal. So that actually might be the one that I should be focusing on even more so than the other one. But either one will work to progress me. Let's go ahead and start into round number two. We're gonna pick up the pace as less explanations are likely needed, but we will talk about anything that's new or unique that pops up. So let's dig right in with the market phase. Now, I know I just mentioned this goal right here as being a good one to go after, but I'm actually starting to think that selling a spirit containing three alcohol or more might actually be the best bet. The reason being is during the distill process of round number one, I got a bunch of alcohol that got pulled out, which means I'm able to, when you have alcohol inside of your pantry, you can place it in your wash back, but can only be placed in this location or this location either to replace a yeast or a water or it could just be placed in with them either way they can be put in so in other words I can really increase my odds that I'll have enough alcohol at the end of the distill process to pull off selling a spirit containing three or more alcohol and be able to complete that one so yeah maybe this one's actually the one to go for now going into this market phase, lots of things going through my head. I could go ahead and purchase a recipe outright. I could actually try to make vodka again and then just take the spirit label bonus, which lets me take a recipe for free. So I could go about it that way. Um, the other options I have here is yeast and water are two things I need for my washback, but because I have two alcohol in the pantry, I can literally use the alcohol to be yeast and water, so I don't actually need either of them, but it's worth mentioning when I do in the future that they have abilities on them that are nice. When you take a yeast, you actually gain one money. So if you take that early in the market phase, you can actually increase how much money you have. If you take two of them, well, you get two gold as well. The water allows you, it says when purchased, you may reveal the top card of any market deck to all players purchase it or return it to the bottom of the deck so both of those have some pretty cool abilities being that they're free cards coming from the basic market when you pick them up so from the basic market row the thing to keep in mind is even though things like grain sugar seem like almost obvious grabs every single time because they cost nothing they're also not netting you any spirit points or any money for being inside after distilling your spirit whereas if you're taking premium ingredients that actually are in the same category Category, like the millet up here you're gaining money as well as spirit points so that's where you know purchasing ingredients that are more premium will make sure that your overall spirit nets you more in the end so it's always easy to take the free stuff but it's not necessarily boosting me much on the shelf uh, score track so I'm going to still take these mixed grains this time around so I'm going to take two of them into my pantry and then we're going to go ahead and take a look at this market up top here because I have seven to spend and I want to spend it now looking at the market, there's a bottle in here that looks really awesome. It lines up perfectly with the type that will be made when I make vodka, which will match my distiller identity perfectly, allowing me to gain four SP. So that in my mind is worth the four cost to buy it. 
Not only that, it increases the amount of money they're gonna make by two when I use that bottle, which is nice. So I go ahead and pick that one up. It's gonna cost me four, I'm using a five. I'll take one back. And I've also gone ahead and pushed everything down the row and pulled out the next card. It was a pirate bottle. I have three coins left. Now I really wanna make sure that what I'm doing here ends up working. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend three coins. I'm gonna pick up the millet at the end. That's gonna give me another grain sugar type. But the great news about that is when it ends up in my wash back in the middle, it's gonna add additional alcohol into the pile. Again, mitigating the whole distilled process in general. The row moves down and rice came out. Now we're going to the cards here to determine what's gonna happen with this market. What are we losing? Well, we know the end of the row is gonna go, but we have a number of other ones disappearing as well. Based on the B goal card, which is just out of screen, these are all the different slots that got taken away. Now we're gonna push them all to the right and draw some new cards up. The market has been replenished and it's worth mentioning, it's always very tempting to buy things from the premium items in order to barrel things up or to bottle them up in order to get them made or to sell them or to focus on ingredients in order to make sure that you're kind of mitigating the distill process. But don't forget about distillery upgrades up top. These provide lasting benefits for your distillery overall that you can take advantage of usually by phase or by some type of action occurring. So for instance, the tropical warehouse here says, during the sell phase, this counts as one additional flavor card when adding age spirit flavor bonuses. So when you do the flavor bonuses, that tropical warehouse is gonna give you an additional one on top of it. Again, if you're doing lots of age spirits, that's gonna add up over time. The drone camera is really cool. Once per round, copy the ability of a distillery upgrade that is face up in the market. That gives you a ton of flexibility. You have other other specialists that can show up. We have a large storage there on the far right that was there from before as well as the architect. That one says once per market phase may discount one item by one. See like those kind of things round over round can be huge. Now let's move into the distill phase. Let's go ahead and place our ingredients into the wash back in order to pull off the vodka that we're trying to make and hopefully meet the gold card we're going after. As I mentioned before, alcohol can be used to replace yeast or add to the yeast pile here or be used to replace water or be placed in the water pile here. So I've got one in each to meet the requirements to be able to create something. And then I've got something in the middle here, a whole bunch of those grain sugars. Because I have three, I get to place three alcohol in here. So now I've got a total when I put this whole deck together of five, which should give me very good odds that even the worst case scenario where I pull a top card off and a bottom card off and they're both alcohol, we're still going to meet that goal. All right, let's find out what's on top of the deck. First, we got ourselves... A mixed grain coming out. That's actually pretty good because that means we got lots of alcohol left in the deck, which is good for money because each of them are worth one coin. So we have two mixed grains in here, which means we certainly can make vodka at this point, And that's exactly what I'm gonna aim to make. So we're gonna go ahead into my storeroom here. I'm gonna grab my metal barrel because that's exactly what we need to use in order to pull this off. We're gonna grab a vodka label as well. Putting these all together, they're gonna end up in the warehouse. And we can immediately jump into the sell phase because, well, I'm selling this thing. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off. We're gonna take this bottle and add it into the fray. And we're gonna go ahead and sell. Let's see what we got here. So we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's pretty solid. And if you include the one from over here, that's nine. So we got nine coins going in the bank. Now for spirit points, let's take a look through here. We have one down here for the millet. We have none on the alcohol, and we have, what's this one state? Four, again, for this awesome bottle. So that's gonna be five right there. We don't get the bonus off the Brown Brothers this time because we're not selling a spirit from a region where we have no other spirit labels from. We do have vodka currently created and that counts as being from this region, the same as the vodka we're making right now is from this region. So it's not the first time. So we're just sticking to what we've gotten here, but we also get an additional two off the vodka recipe. So we end up with six, which bumps us from six up to 12. And now for our spirit label bonus, we're gonna go ahead and select to take a free recipe rather than the SP points as the other option. And I'm gonna go ahead and take one of the silver tiered ones as I'm gonna be probably focusing, I think, on whiskey. I'm very tempted also to go to the, well, there's brandy too, that's, now brandy requires a completely different ingredient. It goes after the fruit sugars of which I could pick up, but they cost two a piece when you wanna pick them up and buy them. And I'm not gonna have much here going on for my wash back 
to cover my yeast and my water next time. I only have one alcohol in there to cover one of them. So yeah, maybe I should just stick with the whiskey for now. Now we're gonna go ahead and break apart our spirit deck. So all the alcohol is gonna go back to the alcohol deck. We got these ingredients, which are gonna go back to their respective decks. The mixed grains, the basic one, goes back to the basic market. Any of the ones that are considered premium though, just go to the truck. So that's where this one is gonna go, of course, in the premium ingredient row of the truck. And then the bottle that we use, we wanna remember not to put this in the premium item discard, but instead right next to our dashboard to represent another bottle that we used when we sold spirits. Now we successfully completed a solo goal card selling a spirit containing three alcohol or more. We gained two SP, so going from 12 to 14. At this point, we place money on it to let us know that we've completed that goal. And that's gonna open up these two above. We'll flip them over and find out what they are. The one on the left states sell a bronze tier spirit. So looking at my clipboard here, that's gonna be Kachaka or Soju. And we don't have either of those recipes unlocked yet but something we can look at. The other one is collect two different spirit labels. We currently have only vodka as counting as one spirit label. We would need a different one. So if we went after whiskey, for instance, that would work. Now, something to note is that the active row marker is still currently on row one because we have not completed a goal from row two just yet. We only revealed the ones above the one we completed, but this stays down here, which means we could still do this one if we want, which is to collect a silver tier spirit label. We have to collect the silver tier spirit label by selling a spirit that's silver tier, which would be something like a whiskey, for instance. So that would work quite nicely if we wanted to pull that off to get some extra coins and SP. But we'll think about that going into round number three, which we're moving into right now. Now heading into this market phase, I have two ingredients in my pantry to keep note of. I have mixed grains and alcohol. Now something that I'm eyeing from the premium ingredients row here is the rice, which is one of the grain sugars, which paired with the grain sugar I have in my pantry right now would be the two required that I need to have in order to put whiskey together. Again, remember though, even if I put just two grain sugar into the wash back to try to create it during the distill process, it's possible I could lose a grain sugar and then I'm not able to create whiskey. So to to make sure I can, I'm gonna to wanna to put a little bit more grain sugar into the equation. I've gone ahead and paid the two coins required in order to pick up the rice card. It's now in my pantry, so I now have two grain sugar in there. And also I've gone ahead and grabbed a new premium ingredient, which was figs. So nothing else in this row here is gonna help me if I'm gunning to make whiskey at the moment. We might talk about something else in a second, but coming down here to the basic market where I can grab two cards, I do know I have an alcohol card in my hand, which means during the wash back, during the distill phase, I can use that alcohol for either a yeast or a water, which means I still need one or the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this yeast here for free. It states on it when purchased, immediately gain a coin. So that's quite nice. It bolsters how much money we have. So now we are up to eight. And next, again, I'm gonna go after the mixed grains. Now again, strategy-wise, you can go after any of these different types of sugars. I just happen to be going after the grain sugars quite heavily because they actually work quite well for the recipes that I've unlocked. Whiskey uses them, vodka by default uses them, and of course, if they get all pulled out of the equation, I have nothing left, moonshine's the option. So again, all dependent on what recipes that you're unlocking are the types of sugars you're gonna be focused on. I'm grabbing this one for free. Now, as I mentioned in the prior round, I really wanna focus on some distillery upgrades. You'll see the ones on the far right, two of them. We have the specialist, the architect, and we have equipment, the large storage. If we pick both of those up, you'll see they have a similar ability on them, which is pretty cool because I could use those, compound them. However, you'll see one of them specific to a discount on distillery upgrades only. So you can only have three distillery upgrades in your distillery at any one given time, but you can take more than that. You just have to discard one away if you choose to buy more and use it. And then of course the other one just lets me take one uh, on the cost away from anything from the market phase, which can be very handy because it can be across all kinds of different things, but it costs a little bit more to buy in the large storage at four. Now over here we have the drone camera, which looks really cool because then I can just utilize any power ability from the distillery row in the market. Uh, once per round, which is amazing. That's probably the one I wanna go for. And then this one right here is really good because during the sell phase, you get to add additional flavor cards into the mix as you go forward. So that's a plus. It's very expensive though, but I think I'm gonna spend five on the drone. So I've gone ahead and slotted this equipment into one of the distillery slots. You'll see there's the three that I have. It's gonna cost me five coins to buy it in the bottom right. So I've gone ahead and paid that up. I've got three coins remaining. 
And to fill that slot, we got ourselves a private investigator. It's a specialist. And this one actually has that green icon I talked about earlier on, which always triggers at the beginning of a new round. It says you gain two money if you have at least one spirit in your warehouse. So if you are aging spirits, this individual is going to be very beneficial for you. So I have three coins remaining, and it's worth mentioning, I'm not gonna buy any additional premium ingredients, but it's always worth thinking about what you might be wanting to distill based on your goals and everything else going on around in the future, not necessarily in the given round that you're in. It's always good to prepare for the future because again, when you go to the still phase, you don't have to use everything from your pantry. So you can spend money right now to pick up ingredients that you don't plan on putting into the distill phase when it happens. They can stay in your pantry and use them on rounds down the line. So that's where you can start planning what your next thing is going to be if you have more available money to spend. Now, in terms of this premium item row, I definitely want to upgrade my bottle because once I get to a point of wanting to sell this stuff, I'm going to want something that's a little bit better. and It's going to net me some good points. So I think I'm going to spend my final three coins on the pirate bottle. Now, I just realized that I made a mistake in terms of how the premium market is refilled when you buy something like I did here from this slot. Instead of the new card coming out into this slot, everything else is going to slide down very much like when you're using those B goal cards to reset the market and the new card comes in at the leftmost space. We'll do the exact same thing way up top for the distillery upgrade. It doesn't have any gameplay impact, but I want to mention this because it's important that you do this correctly. So I've gone ahead and taken the private investigator out of the space it was in, brought it to the far leftmost column as I pushed everything else over. We're all squared away, no gameplay impact there. But in the prior rounds of play, I might have just gone ahead and replaced the card in the slot I bought it. Make sure you push things down the row before you place the new cards in. We're now at the end of the market phase. We're gonna go ahead to the goal B cards. I'm gonna go ahead and take the deck. We're gonna place the top one on the bottom and we're gonna see the pattern in which we're gonna be discarding cards to the truck. Those market refresh cards really do change up the market. Now that we've shuffled everything down to the end of the row, let's drop some new cards. And here's our new market, all set up and ready to go. Now we move into the distill phase, we're gonna place the cards we'd like from our pantry into the washback. We got ourselves three grain sugar through the middle, we have an alcohol to use for water, and we have yeast on the other side because we have three sugar in the center, we're placing three alcohol in as well. Let's go ahead and distill and see how we do. We're gonna take off the top card and it's an alcohol going back to the pantry. The bottom card of the deck is and alcohol as well. At this point in time, I wanna use my drone camera, which states once per round, copy the ability of a distillery upgrade that is face up in the market. And in the market right now, there's one called Spirit Safe, and it states during the distill phase, you may choose to return one of the removed cards back to the spirit. So I'm gonna put one of the alcohol cards back into the deck. Just wanted to show you an up close view of that distillery upgrade that I just used thanks to the drone camera. That drone camera is really handy. Now this time when we're determining what we can actually distill based on what we have here, we have three cards that are all about grain sugar, which means looking at the recipes we've unlocked, we cannot make moonshine because grain sugar exists. We could make vodka if we wish. We could also make whiskey because we need two or more grain sugar. So this is one of those situations where you can choose what spirit you're going to go ahead and create. So even when you're done the distill process, it doesn't always push you into just one spirit. You have some leeway dependent on how many cards you put in your wash back and how things go through the distill process to potentially pivot on your spirits at this point in time. I'm aiming to make whiskey and that's an aged spirit. So we're not selling anything during the sell phase. So we move into the age phase. And at this point we simply place whatever we're gonna use to store this in the warehouse. In this case, it's gonna be a wood barrel as it requires right on the recipe itself. So we're gonna place this on top of our deck which has been flipped over and it's going to go into one of the slots in our warehouse. So we'll go ahead and just place it down here and once we do this we're now going to go and get a flavor card from the flavor deck and we're going to place it face down without looking at the bottom of the stack. So we're going to take this flavor card and we're going to slide it underneath. Something else we don't want to forget to do is to place the label of the type of spirit that we're creating, in this case whiskey, on top. We now move to the end of the round and because we have a spirit aging in our warehouse we can choose to have a taste we can take up to four SP away from our total score in order to gain that many coins. So I'm going to go ahead and knock us down from 14 to 10 in order to gather 
four coins. Now the tasting is an optional thing, you don't have to do it, but while you have something aging in your warehouse, you can choose to, and it's a great way to generate some money, seeing as we didn't have any because we didn't sell any spirits during the last sell phase. It's a good way to make sure going into the next market phase in the next round that you have some money to spend, but you don't have to do this because you may not want to sacrifice those spirit points. That's gonna do it for the round, so we're gonna move the round marker from where it's at to round number four. It's worth mentioning there's some icons there between three and four. At the end of the third round, you discard down to two distillery goals. We don't use distillery goals in the solo mode, so you can just bypass this and move your marker down. And that, my friends, is going to wrap up part number one for the solo playthrough of Distilled from Paverson Games. I've really been enjoying my time with this on and off camera and looking forward to making a hard press here in the final rounds four, five, six, and seven as we try to accomplish as many solo goals over here as possible to get ourselves up to the top because we need to complete a goal in each one of the rows and then meet the numerical red number or exceed it in order to be successful. So still lots to do, and we've been focusing mainly on the grain sugar side of the equation as my strategy has been going in that direction but we're probably going to have to change things going into the next video so you'll see even more about the strategy of having an age spirit going while also making spirits you can sell quickly at the same time and of course the revenue from that is going to start generating at a quicker pace i'll have more money to use allowing me to purchase more during the market phase and plan for better rounds later on thank you guys so much for watching let me know in the comments below what you think of distilled so far if you have it and have been playing it solo or or multiplayer be happy to see any conversation around it and as always keep on rolling solo